Excellent. So we have also with us uh, the CCM cluster coordinator, Juan, uh, and there, if you want to wave. Um, Elena, Elena Valentini, representative for ACTED in the, Glo in the CCM Global uh, Strategic Advisory Group and CCM coordinator for ACTED. Elena, I don't see you, but uh, Yes, <laughs> you know, waving. And then we have also the, the CCM Working Group uh, uh, Chair. Uh, so the CAM Management Standards uh, Working Group, uh, Participation and Displacement Working Group, Sustainability, Clean Energy and Connectivities Working Group. Um, Jen, Jon, uh, Amalia, if you want to wave. And uh, I'm very glad to see that uh, many of you have joined us today for the session on ABA. Um, in the session of today, we are going to provide a brief outline of the ABA uh, development and discussion within the CCM community over the last years. And we will introduce the uh, CCM paper uh, on ABA uh, that was recently finalized. Uh, we will have uh, also the opportunity to um, have a, a conversation with the Global Cluster Coordinator around uh, the relevance of uh, error-based approaches within the CCM work. We will hear uh, about example of different modalities of ABA in current uh, CCM yeah. field operation. And uh, we will also try to um, highlight the, the synergy between the ABA discussion and uh, um, other teams and other working groups currently uh, developing uh, within the CCM uh, cluster. We will have two moments, uh, the second part. And uh, yeah, we really hope to, to yeah. hear from all the participants. We look forward to the <laughs> 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 Uh, sorry, one. Some colleague is speaking, and we cannot hear you, Giovanna. Please mute yourself, colleague. can you? Three. We have to see. Henry. 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 Patricia, you have to mute them because I cannot do it anymore. I'm trying to find Henry in the yes. Now it is uh, okay. Henry is muted. I, I cannot do it. Patricia, yes, you want to add me as a co-host, and I can help. Okay. Super. So then, uh, um, uh, so we really hope to to hear from you. So to we look forward to your questions, but also uh, we want to hear about uh, you know your experience, uh, challenges, ideas, suggestions. And uh, um, please don't hesitate to use the chat to make your comment, your, to make uh, your questions. Um, before, um, before presenting the outline of the CCM uh, ABA paper, I just would like to uh, take a moment just to summarize the background and the development of the um, ara based discussion within the CCM clusters. So why and now we arrived uh, uh, today uh, with, this, uh, with this paper. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. So the discussion um, within the, the CCM cluster around the ABA has been linked with the reflection, but also with uh, the experience of uh, uh, CCM expertise uh, um, outside of camps. So this is not, um, you know, it's not a new discussion actually. Um, already uh, 10 years ago in the CCM retreat uh, in 2011, uh, it was recognized that CCM practitioners uh, were already involved in uh, providing different kind of assistance outside, outside of camps. So uh, while they were facilitating return or uh, collecting data of displaced uh, uh, population living within the host community, or uh, while supporting people uh, living in camps but working outside, or uh, while identifying and monitoring gaps uh, in relation to service provision for uh, displaced population not uh, living in camps. So uh, already at that time, so uh, already a long uh, time ago, um, there was this recognition about uh, you know, CCM involving activities at South of Camps, but there was a lack of uh, um, common guidance, uh, common approach 
uh, when we were working in this context. So in 2013-2014, the CCM cluster engaged in a desk review to explore um, the current uh, uh, practice, so what we were already doing um, outside of the borders of camps, but then also um, to try to, uh, the desk review tried to identify the CCM areas of expertise that could be relevant or could be uh, potentially uh, develop further uh, to address some of the key gaps of the humanitarian response uh, in uh, urban context. Um, the, the review, the, 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 the UDOC uh, desk review, uh, Urban Displacement Outside of Camps, how we name it, uh, was then published in 2015. Um, in that desk review, we did not really explore in depth, uh, you know, the, the connection between, uh, you know, CCM activities outside of former camps and the concept of area-based approach. But it was uh, already at that time clearly stated that um, CCM activities need to relate always to a specific geographical areas. They need always to apply an Arab-based approach. And these areas could be a camp, could be an informal site, but could be also potentially um, an urban neighborhood, for example. So this link between uh, uh, outside of camps and Arab-based approach was uh, further explored uh, and developed over the years through um, learning from uh, you know, field testing, field experience, but then also through the uh, engagement into the broader discussion around the uh, ABA beyond, uh, yeah, beyond the, the CCM uh, clusters. In um, uh, between 2015, 2019, we have uh, um, yeah, several testing in different countries uh, from different organizations with slightly different modalities. So in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Greece, in Iraq, uh, in, Afghaz in Afghanistan, in Yemen. Um, in, uh, um, in the retreat in 2015 and 16, uh, we had uh, Elizabeth Parker uh, coming to presenting a bit on the concept of, on, um, on the concept of Arab base. Uh, and we start to uh, develop more, you know, uh, this connection between, uh, you know, Arab base and uh, CCM work outside of formal camps. In uh, 2018, we formed the ABA working group, um, uh, but also we uh, started to be, uh, let's say, a bit more uh, present and represented in the, uh, in the global urban shelter working group. Uh, in 2019, uh, we work on a guidance on uh, CCM uh, mobile modalities as one of the way for CCM to work uh, through an Arab-based approach where we have large areas and many um, uh, small informal settlements scattered around. Um, then uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the retreat 2019, it actually was the last retreat we did uh, in person, uh, based on the, you know, on this, uh, on the learning and the test in several countries and by different organization, it was agreed that was time to uh, to have a paper, to have a document which could uh, somehow summarize uh, the experience and the expertise of uh, CCM um, using our base approach. And now um, I will hand over to Annika that will uh, uh, present the main content of the paper. Yeah, hi everybody. And um, Patricia, if I could ask you to just move one slide forward. Thank you. So thanks, Giovanna. And um, as an introduction to our discussion today, um, we would just like to give you know, a very brief overview, just the key points of, of the TCM uh, paper on area-based approaches. And uh, we are really glad to launch it here with you today. Um, I think Patricia will uh, paste in the link and you can also see it on the slide because if you want to go into the detail, then uh, it's better to read the, the whole document. So this, this paper is uh, um, an outcome of the efforts and inputs from, from many CCM actors, CCM SARC and the practitioners. Uh, it's been discussed at the retreats and within the Arabas working groups. And I think many of you have been part of this discussion. So um, in effect, it kind of consolidates 
No, it consolidates the experience and knowledge gained by CCM actors implementing and testing area-based programming um, in the last years. And uh, many of which are also documented in the case studies which you saw earlier, which you can also look up if you want to go into the detail of how that has been, been done. But I think also on the other hand, for me at least, it is, um, it is a stepping stone or let's say a food for thought for further discussion for the retreat which is coming now and, um, and also with other sectors and other working groups, uh, CCM working groups and other sectors working groups. So in, in summary, in a nutshell, um, the paper highlights the CCM actors experience and skill set and activities that are just very relevant when implementing area-based approaches. And there are very many similarities and synergies already between the activities CCM undertakes in camps or camp-like settings um, and what is needed if you want to do an area-based approach, which is one of the modalities, one of the menus of options which, which is available. So, so in, um, but in general, area-based approaches aim to really better address the challenges of outside of camp displacement and the needs of the displaced who may be living in urban neighborhoods, who are maybe living uh, in rented accommodation or in, on land, on squatting uh, land or on rented land, intermixed and intermingled with the host community. So, so um, as, and as we know, you know, area-based isn't a new concept, as Giovanna said, and it's not a new approach. And it was really developed out of a need, out of a need to better locate, to better access the needs, to better reach, and to communicate with displaced people living dispersely within often urban neighborhoods, but not necessarily, but we will get to that later. But it, um, until today, most of the things we have seen were within urban environment. Um, Patricia, um, could I ask you to move forward to the next slide, please? So you can see here, um, area uh, approaches are in general characterized by these, by these four characteristics. And many of you have, have seen them already. And if when you look at them and when you read them, um, it very much resonates, you know, very much resonates with the roles and responsibilities CCM takes in general for example, in camp-like situation, but also in camp, and are already part of the CCM menu. So for example, targeting specific geographic area like a neighborhood or a district with a high concentration of IDPs um, and a high need of assistance and protection, um, very much like a camp-like situation. Assessing the needs of an area or neighborhood uh, holistically from a multi-sectorial perspective. Um, and that's also very much a forte of, um, of CCM. And of course, there is an aiming to consider the whole population in some degree of assistance. And that may be maybe specifically in the communal aspect of assistance, for example, in the community feedback mechanisms, as an example. And then, of course, finally, the engagement with a wider spectrum of stakeholders um, in uh, local level coordination and in services and assistance. And most importantly, of course, the, the local authorities who are the responsible bodies within the districts and the neighborhoods. But of course, also with the host communities themselves, which are the neighbors and um, the school headmasters and the health clinic people, the people live within. So experience has shown that uh, CCM skill set and experience um, are very much lend themselves to area-based approach and they can be adapted and the priority slightly shifted to um, because there are many overlaps and similarities. And so um, if we go to the next slide, we come in a way to the last part um, of the paper. Um, which in a way summarizes how CCM actors in the past and still do have adapted and shifted their priorities when implementing CCM area-based programming or some aspect of such. And um, there are really three main modalities um, which have been developed and have been used. And, um, but firstly, 
it isn't really a modality, but maybe one can say more of an approach that there is a very strong emphasis of building partnership with local authorities, you know, taking a supportive role through capacity strengthening activities or mentoring program or secondment to local authority or to local level coordination, and therefore working within existing structures and not building um, double systems to some degree. But so one of the main modalities um, which we also will hear more about later from Elena when she's talking about Burkina Faso is the setting up of a place of contact, you know, for the displaced to access information, referrals and assistance. And often, or mainly this has been in the form of a community center, community resource center, community information center. There are many mutations which have been developed, which are very specific to that displacement context and the country and the time. It was done. But these are really platforms for the community to engage um, as a community, the community representation forms or in community neighborhood forms, and also to creating linkages between these communities as a whole with service providers which operate in the area or the local community or strengthen their relationship uh, with each other to be part of decision-making processes. Um, the, the second one, which you can also see down here on the icons, is um, the, the neighborhood community and, and strengthening existing community structures and that mechanism. And by that, including displaced people within the systems, or maybe if they don't exist, um, to uh, facilitate them. Um, and lastly, the mobile team, which was also mentioned in which there was a separate paper also written about it, but very much also a modality of area-based programming, which looked at the much more localized level um, in comparison to the community center, which is maybe uh, on a larger scale, which have, um, which have skilled teams. Hello? Yeah, sorry. Which have skilled teams will go and visit and work with the community on a local level. So very quickly, uh, because we want to have time for the discussion, which is, uh, but this is just really a background, but you can see here on these two diagrams, um, which are really the uh, two main settings, area-based approaches, the CCM area-based approaches have been tested and are done. So on the one hand, the high density urban area with a very high, very high concentration of displaced people, where people live together next to under vulnerable and marginalized population groups like migrants or host um, communities. So for example, Iraq and Afghanistan is given as an example. Or the dispersed rural context where within a big administrative district, there are very, very small, many small little um, groups um, of settlements of people or dis where displaced people have settled, but they are reliant on the infrastructure and the services of these uh, villages and maybe often they experience great pressure because of this influx, like health clinics, for example. So this was just a really brief uh, background uh, and summary to start off the discussion and have a basis to, uh, on which we want to continue. Um, and um, on that note, uh, Joanna, I hand back to you to continue. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Annika, for the good introduction to the paper. The link uh, to the paper is on the chat. Uh, before opening the floor for questions, um, I have um, yeah, I have a few questions uh, to uh, the cluster coordinators. Um, I think we can we can um, uh, put off the PowerPoint, and uh, I would start with one. Uh, so we uh, so we talked a bit about the um, you know the background uh, where uh, you know from within the CCM community uh, we have seen uh, you know the key uh, highlights of the paper. So, uh, but I want to ask one: Why uh, do you think it's uh, it's important for CCM to engage uh, in the ABA discussion? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gio. Um, I think one of the biggest challenge faced by all of the humanitarian actors when working in urban or out of camp settings is to 
um, identify the most vulnerable groups and ensuring that they have access to information they need in the correct and appropriate format and channel that they need and that they're able to be represented and participate in decision-making process that will directly impact their lives during displacement. And these are some of the core responsibilities that camp managers do within the traditional camp settings. Um, often in out of camp settings, like lack of clear centralized location to go for information or ask for assistance as people do to like camp manager's office. Um, you know, like that kind of lack can be a real barrier for some for groups of people. Um, I think especially for those who may not want to draw massive attention to themselves um, as a displaced population um, living maybe informally in, in urban settings. Um, and, and I think that kind of lack of access um, and lack of ability to be represented um, can, can also result in increased vulnerabilities, exposure to risk and, and limited access to assistance and protection. Um, and I think the work on ABA that CCCM has been doing over the past 10 years really like put forward some operational and practical ways to approach this based on the skill sets that we already apply within camp and camp-like settings. Um, and I think this paper really put out in a simple kind of straightforward manner on, on what this could look like, especially coupled with the case study that were published last year and the ones that will be published um, this coming year. I mean, I hope that this sort of like will help us work together in, in addressing how we need to adapt our ones in these settings. And I think especially to communicate um, with other actors and, and other sectors in, in addressing these gaps. Thanks, thanks, Juan. I would, uh, um, the same question for you there. So um, why it is important for CCM to engage in the ABA discussion? Uh, thank you, Gio. I mean, first, allow me just a few seconds to thank you and uh, Annika for this event, and thank you for overall working uh, along the years on the on the ABA area. It has been really inclusive and different actors, and actually very much informing the field and the vice versa. As you know, that I'm coming recently from from the field operations, so this is really good. And I think also it's good to mention that we have Jorn here with us, who has been investing a lot of time and effort to ABA discussions since we were probably in the school and he was uh, he was the one uh, showing us and he was teaching taking us through predicting that this will become uh, an important issue probably why it is also because Jorn said it you know a long time ago when when he, he senses things so <laughs> good to see you on cam Jorn and the, I'm also very happy to to see that the vast majority of the participants we know it which basically indicates that we are in close touch and I hope that we will also know the very few colleagues whom we don't yet know here now Coming to the question, Giovanna, and allow me to connect this to a very recent discussions over the overall humanitarian response. Recently, I was reading one statement by the Emergency Relief Coordinator Under Secretary General Mark Lockock, telling that there is an urgent need for a humanitarian review of the entire system and the way we operate. And uh, there are also a calls for having more uh, independent bodies giving us inputs and advices on how to operate in a system. This is basically, I think, a wake up call for, for all of us to be a little bit horizontal in the, in the way we see and in the way we look at the way we are operating and try not to look at the good things which are plenty but also the area-based approach is simple like this for us is there are many much stronger specialized expertise responding to the different needs of the situations or in natural areas doing much bigger than what the CCCM actors are doing what we have been noticing over the decades over the years in the past that the response in a communal gathering, let's call it here a camp or a camp like setup or a site, had always been very helpful to inform these actors that first it has to be adjusted when there is a different level of people living in a communal gathering. There has to be a certain level of adjustment to have 
better ways of thinking about the future of these communities, having a different way of sharing information to avoid the applications, and to make sure that the response is tailored to the needs of the people. I mean, simply my call in the field over the decades is to tell everyone, it is good to respond in all camps and camp-like setups. Here is what we can offer. So you are stronger, you are more relevant in providing the response to the communities in these locations. This in the sites show a certain level of governance system, which is applied in a way where we do this jointly with the communities, where we are able somehow to show that this joint work is also having a lot of added value to uh, lifting up a dignified approach vis-a-vis -vis these communities and tailoring the response, not making it aid only, not making it community blind approach, not making it internationals coming to tell, but more a participatory approach that is done in a governance manner that somehow we have been learning from the sites over the past years. This governance manner in areas that are not categorized as only camps have been submitted to different actors and it has shown a relevance and the proof that it has been useful for these different actors to use and rely on. I simply want to say, I see that the food security cluster is with us in this as an example. We have in camp submitted information to the food security clusters along as the other nine other clusters in the entire intelligence standing committee system on the IDP sites. But in Syria, as an example, we have also been submitting them information on the movement of the population, where they are, where they are concentrated out of camps to inform their response and their strategy so that they will basically know what to do when and how to do it together with the other actors, with the other clusters. So it is more a comprehensive response to the, to the communities. In, in simple words, and I will, I will keep it very short and hope that this will be very, very interactive discussions. In simple words is that we are just there to provide more informative governance, dignified mechanism for all the respondents in the field of what we have been doing in sites, which is more giving a tailored informative information to everyone with a comprehensive response. But more than this, it is also very important for the international donor community and the local actors to know how this is functioning. We have been showing a quicker reporting and monitoring capacity by applying ABA approach and informing the different actors. So it has also shown more advocacy enabling factors vis-a-vis uh, -vis other actors efforts. That's why I think it is important. And I, again, referring this to the very recent calls to change and revise and enhance the humanitarian system generally. I stop here over to you, Giovanna and colleagues. Thanks, thanks, Dad. We have a, uh, um, I have a couple of questions more. Um, for one, uh, how do you see um, the link between, uh, uh, you know, the, the CCM uh, work around the Arab base uh, done in the last year, both at the field and the global level, and uh, uh, you know the new strategy, uh, the upcoming strategy for the CCM cluster. How do you see the yeah the link, the synergies, the continuation? Mm. I mean, I feel like, you know, going back to what Annika was saying about how this is one way in which we can address the, the need of the displaced population. Um, part of our global cluster strategy for the next three years also is about empowering local actors to take on these roles and responsibilities. And, and I think as Der say, it's about making sure that the, the camp management um, services and functions is, is adapted and, and ingrained into the, the local systems. And, and I think this offers up like a range of opportunities and, and you know, like how it can be applied in, into different settings and working with uh, local authorities and local actors and civil societies um, to make sure that I think that these gaps are, are, are filled and, and addressed. I think that's a priority and, and I think it's making sure that we are adapting to the need and, and the changing situation. Thanks. Thanks, Juan. And uh, uh, there, um, building up a bit on uh, what Juan just mentioned, 
Um, what are what do you think are the CCM ex expertise that uh, we can uh, um, contribute or, or bring uh, when we are working with other actors? So one was mentioning the local authorities, the local civil society. So which is the the unique expertise that the CCM can bring in working with uh, yeah with the others with the other stakeholders? The the unique thing is actually the cross-cutting, the inheritedly cross-cutting nature of the CCCM is what we can bring to the communities. It is a more a backup, uh, but a critical information on what exactly are the gaps and what is needed for a group of population living in urban areas out of camps that we over the years have not seen very different. Of course, very different in some senses, but in some other senses we have seen really a lot of added value to bring in terms of governance capacity information sharing capacity follow-up capacity and the collective uh, response capacity this is all as one mentioned is actually also reflected in our three year strategy that is very much informative to the area-based approach and very much in line with the paper that we are sharing here over Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, the, so, Annika, Patricia, do we have a question for one and there? We have, a, we have a, a, some minutes for questions from the plenary. Well, actually, we don't have many questions, so I uh, would really encourage you to put some questions in um, while we are talking here, because uh, we do have a bit of time. But um, hmm. I have... Uh, I have one question which was asked to me earlier, not today, but many times before, as we are working in the Arab-based working group. Um, when we've shown the diagram and the timeline, how long it has taken us to um, to write these papers, and, and and the question was, why has it been taken? Why does it take so long? Why is it so um, difficult for us to put these uh, thoughts into paper? Um, and um, it's it's really a discussion a question to everybody. But the one as you're here, maybe you want to um, comment on that too. Yeah, I mean, it, so I'm also reading Thomas's um, question here, which um, I think is really valid, and I thought it'd be interesting. I mean, I I was almost going to ask similar question back to you, uh, Gio and Annika. Um, I think in a couple of cases, getting buy-in from different actors can actually be the stumbling block that um, prevent um, the area-based approach being applied. I think it definitely requires a buy-in from all those working in the that particular response. And in a lot of more successful cases, we see this when government take on leadership um, of, of this approach. Um, effectively kind of, you know, kind of reorganizing how the kind of sectoral technical coordination can happen within the broader sort of area-based coordination. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, and I, I think it's, I mean, this is, I think this is something we definitely cannot go at it alone. Um, it's kind of, we all got to go together. And, and I think it's been interesting to see more conversations or similar conversations happening in the different sectors as well um, and different clusters. Um, and I think one of the challenges that everyone is figuring out and defining what this means um, to their way of working and their way of responding. Um, and, and I feel like we're sort of trying to figure out like you know the moment where the pieces can can fit together again how this is linked to all the cluster systems um you know who takes the lead i mean and, and all these sort of questions so i don't know if Dill wants to add anything on on that as well um yeah i mean quickly i think one you you said it more sufficiently than any any way else but james first of all we always would like to have people coming out of this this is CM world. It's uh, it's really really important for us to learn. <laughs> to tell, we had been having different experiences in the field. I mean, the area based approach in Syria, where it was super remote contexts, where humanitarian actors here we are speaking about the local organizations and civil society actors. 
we have been sharing area-based related information on locations beyond the IDP sites. It has worked with the clusters, nationals by that time, or subnationals because there are lots of political discussions about national or subnational in Syria because there is a whole of Syria concerning mechanisms. Example, if this is same, this is the number of people coming in, leaving, this is the lightning system, etc. They have been using this in their request for humanitarian pooled funds. They were using our data, our information, our contact points to help them better navigate their response. But just to, to, to be very, very open and very, very, very clear with, with what you mentioned, Thomas, there is no perfect system. We accept, we agree that we are not introducing this as a perfect system. And th there is in general this uh, carefulness by the different actors with any approach that is introduced recently because this is definitely not a perfect system. But what we are trying to do is really to cover a gap and bring more relevance and more informative response capacity. So what we are really striving in the area-based recommendations and approaches is to make sure that this is covering an existing gap, supporting the other actors. So it's not really by any means also duplicating any, any other similar approaches over. Yeah, I mean, um, on, um, on this about, uh, I mean, the two questions somehow, the, their link, uh, because definitely, I mean, at least from my experience, uh, um, the process was long also because uh, uh, it was not always easy to uh, reach this consensus. We do have also, I think, in our case studies, this, uh, uh, this learning that uh, um, one of the key learning of our experience in the field is to build this consensus that needs to be at different level from the community level than from uh, you know all the others level in a specific context and then I think is also um, it's also fair to say that 10 years ago um, I mean this idea that the CCM cluster was actually working outside of camps was was seen like a, a real contradiction now after 10 years we do have a, you know we do have experience we do have a case study we do have a, um, um, facts of situation where things I mean we had also a lot of challenge but we also a situation where things work out well uh, we have tried out different modalities um, I think also each uh, I mean each organization had its own internal discussion no, on how to see you know, on how to put together CCM and Arab-based approaches. Uh, but I think it was a, a, an extremely, uh, you know, interesting and inclusive process. Um, and then uh, I think, uh, you know, the main difference between, you know, 10 years ago that we have developed a lot of field experience and we learn from it. So now I think we are able uh, really to showcase uh, what probably 10 years ago, you know, we had already uh, some of these ideas, some of these impressions, but, you know, we didn't have like really uh, capitalize, uh, you know, what actually was uh, was happening. And uh, nowadays we, we have also much more, uh, yeah, much more guidance on it. So I don't know, uh, Annika, there is any other questions? Otherwise we can stop here if there is, a, unless there is another question, we could stop here for a few minutes of break. And then we can keep a bit longer the, the other um, the other plenary discussion. Um, yeah, I can't see um, any other questions coming in at the moment. Um, in the background, Gio and Anika. I think uh, Ako has uh, questions, but uh, he's struggling and he's sending. Ako, you are writing directly to me in the chat, so maybe you can unmute yourself and. Yes, please. Yourself <laughs> and make the question. Thank you. Ako? Hello? Yes. Now yes. Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice. Good to see you to everyone. It's the first time to see you, everyone. And uh, because of the Ramadan day, we are from Iraq. Uh, yeah. So, I have a question about the operation system in camps uh, during in Iraq, especially. We have NGOs, they control all the camps, for example, unnominated. So we cannot do everything sometimes because we have some obstacles in checkpoints in Iraq. So as you know, so this is the problems from the our uh, checkpointings from during going to the inside the camp in Kurdistan. 
So as you know, these uh, problems. But my uh, activities in the during the sessions or the campus to make from the community a uh, help, like uh, making artists from the world in the camps, like a capacity building for the adults or the youths. This is my the new suggestions during going to the camps, making activity, making artists from the camps, like some uh, signs or like uh, some uh, things to do, uh, they feeling some things during the camps, like the child to do some artist, how, how can make in the camps? So to feel feelings like uh, making something is. This is my question is from the during going operation from the camps. So this is the my suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Akko. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, if uh, if one and there you have any remarks for this point, we can take a break and we will continue. We still have uh, Um, quite, uh, uh, the second part is also specifically to CAM operations. Maybe we can reach out to ACO separately. Yeah. And I'll ask Patricia to share the, the question also there. Okay, Thank so you. um we, uh, I mean, no need to, to leave the meeting, just uh, you can mute yourself. And I think, uh, yeah. We will start again at 14, yeah, in five minutes, 14.51, uh, depending from in which time zone you are. I'll just leave the cat on while uh... <laughs> yeah. she's, she's the camera on. I'm like trying to quietly. Uh... <laughs> she maybe wants to answer some questions. Um, Patricia, do you want to pause the recording and then we can pick it up again after the break? Sure. Start recording. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, for the second part of our session, we have uh, Elena here, Elena Valentini, the ActiCCM coordinator. And um, I can see you already. Thanks, Elena, for joining Hi. us. Hi. Where, where are you at the moment? In which country? Uh, I'm, joining, I'm joining from Amman. From Amman. Okay. Because um, I have seen that you've been uh, traveling around yeah. quite a lot. I have, I have a Burkina Faso flag here. <laughs> As I'm speaking about Burkina, I'm well equipped. <laughs> Well, oh, that's fantastic. So um, as we want to talk about Burkina Faso, or you're going to uh, tell us about Burkina Faso. So, but in general, again, if you have any questions or thoughts, do put them in the chat because we do have time later if you want to, um, um, particularly to Elena, but uh, of course also to the other working group chairs or to De and Juan, um, if they're still here. So Elena, I was wondering, um, hearing from our discussion earlier, if you could um, tell us a little bit about your programming in Burkina Faso and how you adapted your uh, CCM response strategy to these different displacement contexts you have found there. And maybe you can elaborate a little bit on what are the two um, distinct uh, set, uh, uh, settings you have um, been working in. Sure. Uh, well, obviously, the first step that uh, we took was to carry out assessment in the areas that we had identified for the intervention, uh, to identify the needs of the space population, as well as what were the key characteristics of the displacement context, as you pointed out. Uh, so at the moment, in Burkina Faso, we are intervening in uh, uh, two regions, so the region north and central north, in the north of the country, obviously, and in the region east and Mediterranean in Fada. Uh, so in these three regions, uh, the displacement is uh, um, concentrated in urban areas and very urban areas. So um, uh, um, the space population are uh, driven through uh, to the uh, main urban settlements. Uh, 
but we find different specimen contexts because in uh, region uh, uh, north and central north um, population, uh, uh, space population live in uh, small, medium size uh, self settled uh, sites that are, uh, you know. Um, Capture in the urban centers uh, and in the peri-urban areas, uh, whereas in Fada, uh, in the region east, uh, the, the urban area of Fada, the space population is dispersed in uh, urban neighborhoods where they rent either land and then they build their own shelter or they rent shelters, uh, or sometimes they're just hosted by, um, by local population. Uh, so in line with these uh, different uh, displacement contexts, we adapted our metho methodology of intervention, and in the region to the north and central north, um, we intervene to um, mobile uh, uh, system. So what you pointed out before as outreach teams uh, that alongside with uh, the gestionnaire to sit uh, that are appointed by um, uh, um, Burkina Bay local authorities, roam between the sites, visit the sites regularly, and uh, implement activities, uh, uh, coordinate with the affected population, with partners, and so on and so forth. Um, whereas in FADA, um, we operate through um, uh, community centers uh, that we built in the neighborhood that we identified through our assessment as the neighborhood where the displaced population uh, is uh, um, most concentrated. Uh, so through the community center, we, um, uh, you know, they, they uh, act, I mean, they, they are uh, community apps, as you pointed out before, uh, in which the um, population living in, uh, uh, the, uh, in the neighborhood can uh, access information, uh, can exercise the right to claim, uh, can also access services and uh, serve as a coordination hub uh, within the neighborhood. Um, so, um, all our operation in the country, so both in the north, uh, in the region north, central north, and also in the region east, um, we have also ensured to integrate host communities, uh, as you pointed out, and also as uh, the paper um, uh, points out, is one of the key uh, features of the, uh, of the Arab based approaches. And we um, ensure to consider and integrate host communities in different ways. So, two uh, joint committees, integrated committees that were uh, you know, formed, um, where um, these based communities are represented alongside those communities, uh, but also guaranteeing that they have uh, access as, uh, uh, as the displaced population to uh, information, to complaints and feedback mechanism, uh, and that uh, also their needs and the needs of the, uh, of the most vulnerable um, among the uh, host communities are also brought to the attention of the humanitarian coordination mechanism that are in place. Thanks, Elena. Um, are you taking a breath or are you? Are you yeah. <laughs> also taking a breath. <laughs> well, that's um, this super interesting. And um, I was wondering if you, if you can tell a little bit about, um, you know, how these different uh, modalities have worked together. How is the, the joint um, neighborhood committee has worked with the uh, community centers and the mobile teams, you know what, what have been their linkages? You know how are they how are they um, interlinked with each other? Yes, uh, I mean the um, the community center is uh, the place for uh, the uh, the joint committees, the management committees to carry out activities, to meet, to meet with the with the organization, uh, to uh, you know access information, uh, um, sensitization session done by acted, but also by by other partners. Uh, so it's really a um, a community hub where uh, the community can can access uh, and they can leave actually the community center. So that's uh, that's that's a bit the, the aim of, of the community center. Uh, and obviously we have our teams that also complement uh, the activities that are in the community center uh, with outreach activities within the neighborhood that uh, are served by the community center. So that um, we also um, reach. Uh, vulnerable uh, uh, residents of the neighborhood through outreach activities as well. So we don't necessarily expect them to come to us, but we also um, go and, and conduct outreach activities with them. Thank 
you. Um, well, till now, how what would you describe would be like your main learning of how this system works? You know, what if you um, and what have been the, the the challenges? I know that we had a quick conversation mm -hmm. about it before, but um, it's nice if you describe it here a little bit more in detail. Yeah, well, some of the of the main challenges that we had at the beginning were uh, obviously linked to lack of data or an accurate overview of the uh, displacement context. Um, so something that was one pointed out, um, not only like uh, not knowing precisely how many sites uh, or how many people living in the sites, but also, for example, in the case of Fada, where people live uh, within the neighborhood. Uh, of the town, what were the towns, uh, the neighborhoods that were actually hosting the highest number of, of displaced population, or whether their challenges and, and their needs. Um, so that was definitely uh, a challenge that we faced, and, uh, and this is also one of the reasons why we decided to conduct our own assessment. Um, another one was linked to the fact that in these urban areas there were there are a, multiple, a multitude of actors and partners intervening, uh, and coordination sometimes is not, is not that easy. Um, for example, we understood this quite well when we uh, conducted an assessment uh, to understand what were the preferred um, panel of communication for the information for the population to receive information, but also to present complaints. Um, and the results uh, that came up from the assessment that we conducted that uh, included consultation with multiple stakeholders or the, um, the partners, the American partners, but also um, the uh, local authorities and obviously the house community. Uh, so the results were that despite the fact that there were a multitude of uh, uh, complaint feedback mechani mechanism in place because every actor had its own feedback and me uh, mechanism uh, um, communication channel with the community. Uh, there were still obstacles for uh, the affected population and the residents to access information uh, as well as to present uh, complaints. Sometimes because it was not clear what were these channel of communication because of the multitude of, of mechanisms, uh, you know, with different communication channels, it was not so easy to understand uh, to whom should I present my complaint, how, uh, but also um, because of the perception that uh, their complaints might not be welcome necessarily. Um, so this clearly flagged to us the uh, needs and the added value to have um, you know, assisting actors that uh, try to um, mainstream coordination between all these existing uh, feedback, uh, and me feedback mechanisms to ensure that uh, you know, feedbacks do not get lost uh, between one party to the other. Um, and at the same time, um, we also monitor and ensure that uh, the communication channels within the population uh, for, with the population are really reaching everyone. Uh, also, the um, segment of the population that during our assessment were identified as the ones that have more obstacles to access relevant information. Um, after the challenge was also. Um, uh, connected to the difficulty of convincing partners and stakeholders of the added value of a system actor in an urban context, where either uh, you know um, the displaced population is living out of camps or in this like camp like setting, um, one medium sized capital all around, around the town. Um, and in this regard, um, we conducted uh, training with the support and facilitation from uh, the uh, national working group um, that really helped us to uh, you know define roles and responsibility, define what's the added value, as what as to what markets what the added value is, uh, and at the same time also gaining acceptance on uh, uh, on the ground from from our uh, partners, uh, you know, and this really made uh, made our um, our operation uh, easier. Um, another challenge is uh, really common uh, for uh, organizations working in urban areas, and it's definitely land. Um, I mean, land in urban areas is extremely valuable, and 
I'll, uh, um, I'll touch up, up, upon this uh, later, but we uh, we um, implement a uh, um, integrated uh, program. So alongside the CCM, we also have shelter and fire emergency sanitation, and emergency um, um, sanitation and sensitization activities around hygiene. Um, so. It was really difficult to to complement these uh, these activities with shelter because uh, land is so valuable and it's so difficult to um, to have land allocated allocated for traditional shelter and everything that is connected to provision of uh, uh, of these type of services that are still uh, high high needed by by the community very needed by the community. Thanks, Elena. Thanks very much uh, for giving us this really uh, detailed description and. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. I see there you have put something into the chat. I'm just seeing here. Um, there, would you like to um, ask it directly? Uh, thank you, Annika and Elena. Thank you because simply, Elena, what you presented is again bringing our method to reality. It's uh, obviously very, very useful to see. It's just like it's happening in the field. It's really being applied. What? I mean, the second part is how the communities perceive this. You already answered, I believe, uh, Annika and Giovanna asked you the question and you, you elaborated on it more. And uh, what I think is also probably there has been some advantages in Burkina Faso vis-a-vis -vis the local authorities. I think there has been very much openness on this one. Probably we have to learn on how to build on this. And maybe it will be good to really document this as much as we can so we can share along with the ABA paper, we can share some of the life examples with the different field operations because this will be extremely, extremely useful for them to build on, not to start the wheel, uh, but more to really learn from these experiences. So if there are any documents where you would like to share, I would strongly suggest to forward it to the different concerned actors over. Thanks, Stuart. And uh, sure. thanks, Elena, for... Um giving us this kind of um, description and also kind of grounding the paper. And I think that's what um, Yes, Giovanna, please. I have a question for Elena. So um, I was just curious to, if you can elaborate a bit more, you uh, mentioned uh, this important point about uh, integrating the OS community. That is one of, uh, you know, the, uh, the main feature of ABA, but it's also something that uh, uh, sometimes can be uh, challenging. Um, so, did you have any um, specific challenge around the integrating OS community or any learning anything that you would say, okay, if I have to start from scratch, I would do it uh, differently or I would change, uh, you know, I would change approach? Yeah, sure. Um, well, a big, uh, a big learning uh, was definitely to um, in, include the OS community in a very comprehensive way. So in all the different activities that we, we, we conduct, so not only, for example, through participation or, uh, um, you know, with the uh, with coordination aspect uh, and uh, the, communi the communication with community aspect, giving access to information and also to all the complaints mechanism, uh, but for example, also for the site uh, maintenance component, because we operate in urban, uh, in urban uh, areas, we ensure that, uh, uh, you know, the communities were consulted, and when I mean communities, I mean all the residents of the identified area so the space population and our communities uh, to make sure that uh, we were uh, carrying out small interventions that were beneficial for everyone, so for all the residents that were uh, you know, living and, and sharing uh, those services and uh, could benefit from the small, uh, uh, from the small uh, um, maintenance and rehabilitation intervention that we were carrying out. And we also involve them directly donating uh, tools to you know encourage also um that management and for them to take themselves initiative on small rehabilitation uh, and repairs works that might be needed so um definitely including them in all the different activities that we have conducted cccm and also in our case obviously the um, integrated services so the distribution um that were carried out based on needs rather than than that thanks elena and um 
I'm wondering if it's a good time to, to open the discussion and also include the uh, other working group heads and chairs, which are, I think most of them are here. And uh, we have um, Jennifer for the cap management standards. We have Amalia representing the participation uh, working group. Um, and we have Jörn, and I'm not sure if Brian is still here also for the sustainability uh, connectivity and uh, clean energy here. So um, I'm really happy that we are all together here. I think this is really, really um, one of the special things about the CCM Tuesdays that the working groups come together and look, look forward. And um, so I was wondering, uh, Jörn, if I, if I can start with you. Um, so, um, and you've been talking to me already, right? So what do you think is, um, you know, what are the overlaps between the working groups and what do you think we should be working on in the future? Yeah, well, since uh, they're uh, uh, clearly stated that I have been, uh, uh, been giving this message since before the dinosaurs, uh, it is quite obvious that uh, if we look at camps as the last resort, people have to stay somewhere. And it's not in the camps if we do our work well. So in principle, to, to work on communities and to apply uh, the knowledge we have of identifying the gaps in services and delivery on a grassroots level and then leverage it up to address the problems on the community level is really the core trade of the CCM actors. Uh, and uh, if we have success, these things happen out of camp because that's where people reside. And, and during these 10 years that we have been uh, working on these topics, uh, it has become clear that more and more of displaced people choose to reside or <laughs> accidentally reside outside of formalized camps. We have a lot of figures on it, but uh, it is uh, reasonable to expect that at least 70% of displaced people uh, reside outside camps and um, their steps from a temporal place to stay to something closer to your home is what then uh, later would uh, help us provide durable solutions or actually contribute and support to durable solutions to people that uh, are displaced. So uh, the obvious rationale of working on area-based approaches is uh, very clear to me and has always been people should be supported where they live and uh, where they should be. And uh, camps are the last resort, so they should be in some forms of communities and settlements. When it comes to how this relates to the work of the energy connectivity and sustainability uh, work streams, uh, I think that um, these discussions are almost uh, also then including uh, rights. If, uh, if you have uh, connectivity, then you access the services you have the right to access. If you have energy, then that is an enabler of connectivity and uh, all the other things uh, from uh, your kid being able to do homework at night to uh, improving the air quality of, uh, of your shelter. And, um, and uh, this is, uh, these are the steps of the transformation from a temporal uh, uh, solution to a durable solution. Uh, and um, uh, I would say that the energy and the connectivity and the sustainability are the cornerstones of safe and sustainable uh, settlements and uh, thereby communities. And 
they should not be in camps and uh, in most cases they are not in camps uh, and we should always strive to uh, ensure that uh, displaced people have good solutions outside camps because that's where the communities are so thanks thanks Jan. thanks for um giving us your point of view and then uh well amalia maybe i turn to you um i can just see you you're on the screen but also uh, it's really nice of you to stepping in because um um on the last minute uh for today but uh, you have um and uh, because Ash is sick, but also because we wanted to talk, um, you know, participation and area based approaches as we, as it's really very closely related. And, um, and uh, looking also at the IOM and the, the toolbox and the project. So I'm wondering if you have something to share with us um, of what we be, should be doing. Sure, thank you, Annika. So, yeah, as you said, Ash is sick, unfortunately, so I will be uh, speaking on her behalf and behalf on the working group. So, basically, um, the participation in this place and working group has been looking since it, in its inception, um, uh, it's been looking to explore strategies or to strengthen meaningful participation of different um, displacement groups with a particular focus to women and girls, although also looking at groups that uh, might be also at risk. Um, so um, the, what the working group has been doing was uh, is identifying the best practices within the CCCM actors and also um, sharing learnings from this various displacement context, which obviously include out of camps and urban um, displacement settings. Um, the idea behind the working group is the fact that we all know that participation is a, is a key element of good camp management. But uh, from our operational experience, we also know that meaningful participation of all displaced groups is actually very, very challenging. And this is already happening in formal uh, sites or planned camps. But this is also even more challenging in uh, out of camp context or urban displacement settings where displaced population is just dispersed within the host community. So in this sense, uh, the working group has been um, looking at tools uh, that can be useful for, for this out of camps or urban context. So just to mention a couple of initiatives um, um, through its global partnership, IOM and NRC, um, there was some adaptation of the Women's Participation Project uh, tool by NRC uh, to, uh, to out of camp context, and these tools were piloted no uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan um, a couple of years ago. And more recently, NRC also under the Global Partnership with IOM has uh, compiled um, a, a few tools, but I'm saying a few, but there are actually a lot of tools, uh, CCCM tools and uh, UDOC tools um, that um, are looking to uh, strengthen uh, participation of different, uh, of different um, groups. And actually they are quite focused on um, or urban displacement and out of camp displacement. So the, this is called the Community Coordination Toolbox and it is actually uh, accessible to, uh, to CCM practitioners. I can put both uh, links after in the, um, in the chat. Um, so basically just to highlight a couple of initiatives from the working group that have been looking already in the direction of, um, of urban uh, displacement and out of camps. And the, um, the, the strategy or the aim of the working group is to continue looking at tools, methodologies that work in various uh, displacement contexts. And of course, uh, to uh, coordinate and, and look for synergies between the ABA working group and the participation um, working group when uh, applicable. So that's all from me. Um, NRC colleagues, uh, please uh, add anything that I have missed. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Amalia. And uh, I can see here also the link in the in the chat box to the toolbox, which um, um, there is also a recording of uh, a webinar from the participation working group on that. So if you have missed it, it's uh, really worth seeing. And um, so, um, as you maybe some of you know, our last uh, CCM Tuesdays was uh, starting off with the camp management standards, which was written by the camp management working group, and which was um uh, presented i think in february end of february and uh, the recording is uh, also available if you haven't been there so um that's why i want to uh, just turn to jennifer um jennifer the camp management standards and a um, area-based approaches they 
um, I've seen in several webinars, there have been questions about that of saying, how do they relate, you know, to the cloud management standards also apply in error based um, settings and, and how so? Um, and um, so I was wondering if you could, um, I don't know, enlarge on that a little bit more for us. Monica, I think it's a great question. And, it, and to me, it goes back to, I was taking some notes when you were um, presenting on the like the stage three. And when 10 years ago, when we started thinking about area-based approach, and it was kind of like this, ooh, area-based approach, it seemed as if it was put in um, a kind of either or situation, is that either people were in camps or they were out of camps. We had this, you know, kind of like very direct wall that we were only going to have a strategy that was focused on in camps or only going to have a strategy that was focused on out of camps. And the reality is, and, and I was reminded of it last week when I was um, working with the um, CCCM cluster in sector in Nigeria, where they were developing a strategy where they had some of their population in camps and some of their population out of camps and their CCCM strategy needed to be speaking to both realities and the minimum standards was underpinning both because up until this point we haven't had minimum standards where we were able to speak with a common framework have a common language that we could go back to and say okay so what's the goal that we're trying to reach for all of these people outside of camps and inside of camps what is the ccm standard that we're trying to deliver on and the standard that we're trying to deliver on is that all people who are affected by the disaster, natural disasters or a conflict, have equitable access to protection through a mandated agency for as long as necessary. That's our first standard. And it was so easy to be able to go into Nigeria and to be able to talk to them about developing this out of camp strategy because they already had an in camp strategy. And it was so easy because now we had a common framework and a common language and it didn't have to be an either or discussion. And again, the standards are voluntary. The standards are there as a guide. The standards are there to be able to provide a framework and measure where you start from and then how you get to where you're gonna go. And it was a risk for us to, I, I'm like, honestly, speaking three years ago for us in the minimum standards, it was, you know, when we kept getting evidence back saying like, no, the minimum standards apply only to camp, planned camps. And we're like, no, that's not true. Of course they provide the, the, the standard, which is the rights of the displaced population. The key indicators, of course, are gonna be different, but the standards themselves of upholding the rights of displaced persons through participation, through a, a safe and, and sound environment that people are living in, through a coordinated approach. Those are the three pillars are all underlined by the minimum standards. And it was so nice to be able to have that language and that framework to be able to give them in Nigeria. And it just really, it, it struck me for the first time that the synergy between the standards underpinning all of the different working groups and underpinning what's happening with ABA and what's happening with participation really then provided um, a, a kind of parentheses around it. So um, to me, it made a lot of sense to have the inclusion of ABA in the minimum standards because then we have something that we can work on together. And before we haven't, we've had an either this or that. And that's not the reality that we're ever faced in a displaced context. We need both. We need to be able to have that flexibility to contextualize and to make sure that each setting has the appropriate assistance for the populations that are at risk and at need. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's, um, I couldn't agree more than I'm getting um, um, lots of good uh, comments here in the chat for it. And um, I, I, I so agree because there's also been a lot of research then the, uh, the population is much more transient in urban environments or in out of camp settings and go in and out uh, according to camp. So it isn't such a clear cut situation. Um, so um, I don't know if there are any, any other questions because we are a fairly small group. So, um, you know, 
happy to open um, the conversation. If there are any thoughts or final remarks from anybody who would like to say something, Giovanna, um, uh, if you have something to, to add at this point. Um, no, I mean, I was just, uh, I mean, uh, listening to the, um, to the working group chair, uh, chairs, um, I was yeah, just thinking that, uh, uh, I mean, looking forward, there uh, are, um, you know, different uh, initiative or like a common work that we could do together because there are clear linkages between ABA and other thematic, uh, you know, other CCM thematic. And, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, and they're very spontaneous, you know, very uh, easily to, easy to find. So, I mean, I hope we will have, um, yeah, opportunity and um, uh, resources in the future to, you know, work uh, uh, closely or having joint initiative together. I think uh, um, at the global level, but also at the field level, because then I think at the field level is where, you know, these teams, they materialize uh, into a concrete response. So uh, I'm, I think that if we, if we connect, uh, you know, if we uh, highlight well these synergies, this will also uh, improve, you know, our, the quality of work at the, uh, at the field level, or at least the support that we can give uh, to them. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And uh, um, on that note, um, I hope that uh, you all really enjoyed it, uh, this session, and um, you will read the paper and download it and all the other good links which have been put in the chats. And you'll join us for the next CCM Tuesday. Now, unfortunately, I can't really give you a date for this one, so please watch that space on the website because, as you know, also the CCM. Uh, global cluster retreat online will come um, in the end of June, which is now very soon. So, um, but uh, ah, yeah, you you have good news for us. Well, uh, <clears throat> since um, participation is so important to us, maybe we can just ask that question now because we are doing uh, the studies on uh, energy in. Uh, Lebanon and uh, Nairobi, which are very relevant to the area-based approaches and very relevant to the energy discussions. Uh, from my perspective, we have addressed this previously uh, in the ARC working group uh, with regards to camps and big operations and benefits of sustainability and so on. But uh, we could uh, do the energy, uh, connectivity, energy, and sustainability uh, CMQ space on more settlement related uh, discussions and thereby uh, follow some of the thoughts from the ABA uh, into the ARC and, uh, and do that uh, as planned. Uh, was it? 15th of May or? Yeah, in uh, the last Tuesday of the month. So that, yeah, last yeah. Um, last Tuesday of May, so yeah. Now uh, that you are... That's the question. The, and uh, I think it's it's uh, it's a good opportunity. Well, uh, that's great, John, especially now you are recorded. So um, <laughs> we have the date and um, so please, everybody, watch the space that we are going to um, have another CCM Tuesday in a month's time. And I would really, really like to thank Juan. I would like to thank Der, and of course, very much also Elena and Jennifer, and Maria, and Jan too, and everybody else who participated today and made time in their busy schedule to come and um, discuss with us the area based working group the, the paper and the, the future work so um thank you very much and have a good afternoon thank you very much to everybody have a good thanks Lord. bye bye thank you all have a bye good bye. afternoon bye guys. good evening or good morning bye wherever bye. you are good to see bye you bye. Bye. good to see yeah. you bye bye thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.